Hello, I'm Matt Guff from TheHouse.com, and I'm here with Dave Dodd. Dave, thanks for being here, man. Um, Dave flew in from California yesterday, and he has been walking us through the 2018 line today. And I thought, hell, uh, Dave Downey's in Minnesota. Uh, let's make him talk about stuff. So this is <laughs> this is Dave's interview talking about stuff with Matt Guff. Um, talking about stuff. Yeah. Um, so you, uh, there's, there's a lot going on in snowboarding right now. You've been involved for a really long time. Um, You've seen, You're making me sound old. No, no, only you've only 50, you've only, only been forty nine. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not that old, right? Before you know, a little bit ago, we actually sat down and we watched uh, his TB three section from from a couple years ago, and uh, a lot has changed since then. And there's a lot of new things happening. What what is the number one thing that you're most excited about that's happening in snowboarding right now? I know that's a big question to start off, but you know. Hmm. I know you give good answers. Probably that just, like, it's pretty just normal to snowboard. Like, it's just, you know, like, I ride with my family a lot. So yeah. it's just, that's what snowboarding is. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a, such a cool thing to go take a chairlift ride with your family, your kids, yeah. and snowboard. So that's, to me, what's really cool. Mm -hmm. You know, I see that, too. I see a lot of people snowboarding with their family, you know, and yeah. the mom's riding, and the dad, and the kids, and they're, that's really cool to me. So that's the coolest thing, like, for me yeah. to see, per personally. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of really cool tricks, obviously, that are sure. happening, and the progression of the sport, and all that kind of stuff, but yeah. I would say that is the coolest part of it right now, Yeah, I think. Yeah. Just the family aspect of mm -hmm. it, and kid, little kids snowboarding and turning, and yep, you know, on product that kind of works for them and stuff like that. So that's right. I think that's pretty rad. Yeah, yeah. you know, the LTR program's been pretty cool that Burton's been doing. Mm -hmm. you know, learn, mm -hmm. learn to ride. Mm -hmm. uh, the smaller boards are good. Um, but you, you live in Encinitas, mm -hmm. but you kind of ride Tahoe a lot. Where do you ride Tahoe? Yeah, I lived in Tahoe for a long time, and I ride there a lot. Um, my favorite ski resorts and stuff. I like the ride in the back of sure. on a snowmobile yeah. and go out and hike and stuff. But yeah. um, that's like personal what I really like to do. Yeah. But um, Squaw Valley, North Star, sure. those are probably two of the resorts that I like to ride the most. You know? Sure. And you bring the family up to yeah, go ride. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep. My kids rode a KT22 this last year. And sure. Was on a good pow day. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I was pretty stoked on that. Liked it? Yeah, they were so cool. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Now, wh where did you grow <laughs> up riding? I grew up snowboarding. Well, I didn't start snowboarding until I was 21, so I wasn't really growing sure. up. I was sure. kind of older, but yep. Um, Big Bear. So Bear. Bear Mountain was really where I started snowboarding, mm -hmm. um, and that was the beginning of like that whole Outlaw Park and the kind of the beginning of Bear Mountain sort of. Mike Perillo was making the snowboard park and all that, you know. Yep. Now, at 20, <clears throat> starting riding at 21, it's uh, it's a lot older than what kids kind of start you know riding now. How did how did you start riding at at 21 years old? Uh, it was kind of an accident. Sure. Um, I was on a ski trip. I was a skier. Yeah. And uh, I was a surfer. Thank God. Yeah. Just like, thank God you like started <laughs> snowboarding. Yeah. Uh, but I was skiing. I was a surfer from yeah. California. And mm -hmm. I worked at a surf shop and, um, in Hermosa Beach, ET Surf in Hermosa. And I was like, you know, I've been working there since I was 17. And <clears throat> they had snowboards. They had a couple snowboards. But I was mm -hmm. like, ah, that's stupid, you know. Yep. And then I was on a ski trip with a friend, and I broke my skis. And then he <laughs> talked me into, like, he's like, dude, we have two days left on this trip, so sure. why don't you try, try snowboarding? I'm like, no, no. And then I tried it. He talked me into it. And it was, yeah, life-changing, you know? Like, the first day, I was just like, oh, my gosh, i got to go home and get one of these things, you know? Yeah. Because <clears throat> it was, like, six inches of powder at Snowbird sure. my first day. And so I was, like, yep. I was falling on the cat tracks and stuff. But, like, yep. you know, I was actually riding in the powder. It felt like surfing. So I was just, like, addicted. Felt good. Yeah, and so I went home and bought my first board. First board was a um, Craig Kelly, the purple and uh, gray one. Yeah, yeah. What they call that? The the jelly one. What's that? I think they call that like the vintage uh, snowboard trader guys. I think they call uh, that like the. It was just purple, purple and gray and black, and, you know, like sure. the Kelly Air. Yep. And I bought that from the shop I worked at, and then I actually started working for Burton. Okay. For a few years um, as a rep in mm -hmm. Southern California, and I was working at the shop, too, and, and as a rep, um, and then, um, yeah, it's just, I, I, so the team manager at the time for Burton, Eric Koch, um, he became kind of a friend of mine, you know, he's yep. my age or whatever, and um, 
<clears throat> we snowboarded a few times at sales meetings and uh, kind of like a bear or something like that. Yeah. And then I remember he called me one day and I was like, hey, Dave, um, somebody hurt themselves on this trip to Italy and I can't find anybody. It's a trans world trip. And, yes. and, and can you go? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. So this is out of the blue. This is out of the blue. And um, I remember like I had to talk to um, the rep I was working for. Like uh-huh. I was like a sub rep for Eric Stoops in California. And yeah. For Burton. And he, he's like, yeah, you can go on the trip. You know, it was like a week trip to Italy or whatever. And mm-hmm. I went on that trip and I met Jeff Curtis. You know, yeah. It was like his first trip. And I met my wife, actually, Shannon Dunn. At the awesome. Time. So I met her on that trip. And then... And you had no intentions because you didn't know her before. I had no... No, I had no idea You just what made I was her doing. fall in love with you. No idea. Uh, Brian Thien went on that trip, too. Okay. Which, which was a friend of mine sure. that was riding Big Bear with me okay. a lot. So he went to Italy. And anyways, long story, but we rode in Italy and it was epic. It was powder and we were jumping off stuff and just doing whatever. And yeah. Getting photos. And I had a bunch of photos in a magazine and stuff. And yeah. That's kind of where my life changed. You know? But you didn't plan on it. You were you were a rider that was uh, working for Burton as a rep. Yeah. Got invited. I just liked Italy. snowboarding. I just, just like, loved it. You know. And, and you um, still do. Yeah. Which is it. nice. Yeah. Thank yeah. God. I love it. Yeah. Um, so wh- who wh- doesn't? Right. Well, a lot of skiers. Well, a lot of people from. Uh, they have their own problems. In Mad River Glen. They have their own problems. Right. Now, uh, so you went to this Italy trip. You come back to the states, mm-hmm. um, and then how did you how did you blow up from like. Be, being someone working within the industry to like being becoming one of the most radical riders I was, out there that's with a, parts. That's, I'm gonna refute that because I was never radical. That's like <laughs> seriously, like no, I was never radical. I don't I, know. I, was, I wasn't. I just wasn't. I, I loved it. Sure. And, and I was just never. Kevin Jones was radical. Johan Olsen was radical. Sure. Peter Lyon was radical. Like yeah. I rode with those guys and they yep. were radical. <laughs> like Johan. Was radical. Yeah, and I just was. I was with him, and I loved it. Sure. So you think you were Dude, you, you were that kind of standard style rider within the I group? Don't know, I don't know. I just I, I loved it. I liked it. Yeah. And it's this is funny too because I was on a plane once, and I remember this vividly that I was in first class, like okay. I got upgraded or whatever because I had a bunch of miles, and I was flying somewhere and. I probably had my hat on backwards or something, you know, and this guy's like, so what do you do? You know, he's talking to me and I'm just like, well, I'm a, I'm a snowboarder, you know, and he starts talking to me more and asking questions and so do you compete? And I'm like, no. And he's, yeah. he, I'm like, and he's like, well, what do you do then? And I'm like, I had to think of an answer. Yeah. And I, the first thing that came to me is like, I just make snowboarding look fun. That's what I do. That's the best answer. And that's what I'm, that's what I do. And, yeah. And that's really was kind of what I thought of, mm-hmm. which was, um, Make snowboarding look fun and look good, and yeah. try to represent the sport the best mm-hmm. I can. I learned a lot from Craig Kelly. Yeah. Um, he taught me a lot about that, about like just you know representing the sport right mm-hmm. and doing it right and mm-hmm. turning right. And yeah, you know, he, I used to go out with him, and he would like just grill me, you know, like yeah, not grill me, but like that guy would like turn everything he did was like he concentrated on it like mm-hmm. he would breathe properly he's like turning he's like, <sighs> really? oh yeah he was like insane you know uh, and you know i'll be snowboarding he's like you're not breathing and i'm like what like what are you talking about right. <laughs> i'm breathing and he's like no you're not you're like holding your breath and you're doing sure. a turn he's like that's why you look stiff really you know and just stuff like that okay like, so he taught me a lot yeah um but just make snowboarding look fun. That's kind of what mm-hmm. I like to do. And man, so you've had a lot. You've had a lot of influence on people, and like you just said, you know, you, people like Kelly have had a lot of influences on you. Like mm-hmm. growing up with the crew of riders that you had at, at Bear, like mm-hmm. who else was kind of like helped mold the what snowboarding meant means to you now? Uh, I know there's probably so many. I could list. I yeah. could list a hundred people. Yeah. But Craig oh. Kelly. You know, Chris Roach for their style and the way they snowboarded early, mm-hmm. for sure. Jason Ford, guys like that. that yeah. Were really looked good when they snowboard. Um, mm-hmm. Terry, he's a mm-hmm. huge influence oh. always. Um, yeah. And then it's funny because, like, that's like that side of it. But then the other side of it was I became friends with Jeremy and JP Walker and those yeah. guys. And, like, I was kind of this older surfer guy. Sure. And these are these, like, you know, younger skater guys. But we became friends because when I lived in Utah, Yep. I met them, mm-hmm. and uh, they influenced me a lot for sure. Okay, you know, in in that portion of snowboarding, mm-hmm. like rails and like going on rail trips and things like that, going yeah. with Mac Dog and stuff yeah. like that. Um, Kevin Jones was huge 
yeah. Mark and Zaggy, guys like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hatchet Brothers, yep. big time. Sure. Just for endless knowledge. Mac Dog, right. I think Kurt Heine. There's, those are filmers, but yep. <clears throat> you know, when you're out spending day and day and day on end filming in the backcountry, it's mm -hmm. like it's pretty selfish. Like, I woke up <laughs> and I was like, well, what am I going to do today? I'm going to go out in the backcountry and yeah. find some place. I'm going to, you know. And I look back on it now, I'm like, wow, that was pretty cool. Like, yeah. I got to do that. Yep. And, uh, but also it became really good friends with those guys. Like, mm -hmm. anybody that I went out in the backcountry with, like, brothers. Tight, dude. Like, yeah. tight. Yep. Because it just, I don't know, there's something about it. Like, mm -hmm. you, you're just, you depend on them. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty intense thing. You know, it's really fun and you're having yeah. a great time, but mm -hmm. like, it gets intense and it mm -hmm. gets scary and you know bad things happen and yeah. you become really tight with people so yeah do, do you think people are <clears throat> paying as much attention as they should be in the backcountry now you know the industry is kind of so. I hope so yeah the industry is kind of like pushing these uh, uh, these fun shape more powder boards and I, I think it's uh, helping people to imagine riding in powder like maybe ducking a rope or maybe trying to get going up a heli or renting or whatever um, I think that's a yeah I that's a good question. I think hopefully I'm hoping that people educate themselves. Yeah. And there's a lot of education out there that's, mm -hmm. you know, from people listening to your guide on a heli trip or if you go on a cat trip, like listening to them, talking to them, asking mm -hmm. them questions. Yeah. There's a lot of education out there. Sure. There's stuff on the, on the internet you can learn. Yep. But really the, the way to learn is to go do it. Yep. You know, I could read about it all day long, but like until I spend day and day and see bad stuff happen and see like, whoa, I shouldn't mm -hmm. go there. You know, like, yeah, that's how you learn. Yep. Mm -hmm. But um, you got to be careful and you got to be on your tiptoes at all times. Sure. In the backcountry for sure. Yeah. yeah. What, are, what are some of the pieces yeah. of advice that you'd have for someone that's just like maybe wanting to explore some deeper snow? Like, you know, of course, take a class. Be yeah, in. go slow. It's going to take time. Yeah. It's, it's not right off the bat. Yep. It's not like you're going to go and just go to mm -hmm. Alaska and just start sure. getting after it like Jeremy Jones. You know, like it takes a long time. Yeah. And those little baby steps are great. I took me baby steps. You know, I went mm -hmm. from Big Bear and I moved to uh, Utah. Sure. And I'm going out of the bounds at Brighton. That was, was my, I'm like, whoa, where am what I? Is this? What is going on? This is the back country. And I was just like blown away, you know? Yeah. And that was the little baby steps. And then mm -hmm. going with people, learning, um, taking classes, an avalanche sure. class, learning how to use your equipment, your yep. transceiver and your shovel and your probe and knowing, you know, knowing what the snow feels like, mm -hmm. you know, knowing what a bad day is and a good yep. day. And knowing when to just be like, hey, I'm not going to go out. I'm yeah. over it, you know? Or mm -hmm. you go out there and you're like, dude, this is sketchy. I'm out of here, you know? Yeah. And go home. Mm -hmm. And know when to do that is the key. Mm -hmm. That's my best advice is know when to just be like, I'm out of here. Yeah. Trust your gut. Trust your gut. Yeah. And just be like, this is sketchy. I want to ride this thing. It looks amazing, but I'm out. Yeah. And, yeah. Being, and be cool with that. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you think, do you think, from when you first started riding to where you're riding now, um, you know, technology has played a part on you enjoying snowboarding more? Or has it always kind of been the same for you? Technology? Uh, yeah. I, like shapes, profiles. Yeah, that's always it's, fun, dude. I kind yeah. of love getting stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah. I still love it. Yeah. I love it. Like, what's, what's your... When JG sends me a board, I get it. I'm like, what? I'm like, it's like September, October, and I, there's not going to be snow for three months. I'm just like, dude, I want to ride this thing. You yes. know, like... So I'm still super amped, you know, when I yep. get stuff and try new stuff and be involved with things. And I, sure. technology is really cool for sure. And it's more comfortable now. Yeah. Like yeah. I said, I'm old, so I kind of need that <laughs> comfort. You know, I just, I don't know. I just need it, you know. Yeah, what's up? what's your ultimate setup like right now? I know you could go, you could take any, you could, you got to, we could talk about powder, we could talk about free riding or all mountain and then park, but like what what's your like ultimate, uh, this is my favorite hard good setup right now? Could be, could be groomers, it's not groomers. Just ripping well, groomers. Well, just what I ride is a, usually a, sh a shaped board, so it's okay. a board with taper and a fun shape. Yep. I've been riding bindings without straps on them for like two years. Sure, yep. Um, I like a softer boot. Uh huh. That's kind of my. So I'm riding the step on thing that yep. we're coming out with, and it's been pretty crazy. Like mm -hmm. I, I really like it. Yeah. But I like softer boots and bindings. Okay. Um, Which surprised I, me. Like when we started talking about boots, I for some reason imagined that you would have been a Driver X guy. Yeah. yeah. And you're you're. I, I, 
I see why because you're, you're maybe have a surf background like you like the feel of well I think a lot of people have that misconception of like yeah. you know because you're so extreme everybody has to ride stiff boots you know right. like mm. Yon used to never rode stiff boots no soft yeah Craig never rode stiff boots really? soft Lo really soft. noodles yeah. you'd think that the, the faces that he was descending on no he, soft it boots was, it's, it, he never wanted stiff boots you know Wow. Okay, so Burton Burton is doing some some unique stuff this year. Mm -hmm. it, they're they're launching step ons. Mm -hmm. They uh, a lot of companies had tried doing similar things before without straps. Uh, it was definitely not meant for a guy like me. Like or really, I don't no. Think, I mean, I can bend over and touch my toes and sure. you know, buckle in. I'm fine with that. Yeah, but yeah. It, I just like it because of the comfort. Okay. And the yeah. performance of it, but. You know, they, it was a project for them for like five years. You when know, you say them, who's them? Burton. Okay. Like the, the crew there. There was a group of people that were basically in a white room for like five yeah. years. They couldn't come out. Locked in there. Um, and there's smart people that, you know, they're snowboarders too. Yeah. And they wanted to figure out something that was easy. Mm -hmm. You know, they had like three words in the wall and they just like lived by that. It was like sure. convenience, comfort, performance. Like it was just convenience, like, comfort, well, and performance. Convenience, convenience was, is really what it's about. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Like you're talking about skiing. A lot of people don't snowboard because it wasn't convenient. They don't want to click in. They just don't want to buckle in, like bend over and do that. Yeah. There's a lot of people like that. So yeah, we, you know, Jake was like, dude, we got to make it easier. Like, mm -hmm. you know, make it easy. Make it, it's got to be easy. Yeah. So that's, that was a big thing. But mm -hmm. I like it, not because it's easy, but just because yeah. of the comfort. So. Yeah. And there's been, I'm sure there's a lot of like prototyping um, that went on to do step oh, on yeah. a lot of the boards. Insane. Yeah. No, what, what are some like, what are some of the biggest like. A lot of stuff doesn't work. A lot of that, yeah. What was the biggest kind of like, oh, that was a bad idea. See, there's so many. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So many bad ideas. What is what is the, like one specific design? Whether it be board boot or binding that you saw, you're like, oh, guys, this is we we can't do this. Uh, dude, I they sent me these boards once that were like, like it was crazy because I wrote them, but they sure. were like crazy, like jagged edges and just like all this this stuff that you would just be like, what is that? I was like embarrassed to walk through the parking lot with them. <laughs> and so they've done a lot of stuff like that. Where sure. they're like, let's see if it works and yeah. you know, let's try it. And yeah. And it's like, that oh, it doesn't really work. You know? Yeah. Well, at least you try. And, you know, Burton does a lot of, a lot of prototyping, a lot of R&D, mm -hmm. you know. With the it's, how, um, it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. It's like, you have to try to find out if something succeeds, right? You have to be, I think, okay with like making mistakes, you know, or yeah, I, I think I know Jake's fine with like making a mistake. Yeah. But yeah. that's how kind of how you sure can go forward. Right. You know? Yep. So where, where do you think snowboarding is going now? You know, you, there's a lot of things that we can look forward to in, in technology, but like the, the trends that are happening, a lot of fun shapes. Uh, a lot of a lot of kids kind of getting into the sport, doing some unique things. Whether it be like again contest kids, could be just kids free riding. Like one of my favorite, one of my favorite things that kind of gave me a little bit more of like a, a spike of inspiration and hope for the future of snowboarding and having fun within it was actually I think it was a video of you and Ben Ferguson, just ripping pow laps somewhere. I think it was you two guys. In Japan or something. We went to Japan. Ben's yeah. off. Ben's like amazing. Um, He's, he is. But I don't know. Like uh, the future of snowboarding. It, Kind of like I was saying about the family thing, like it's, it's, it's just a great thing to do, right? Yeah. And that's what people like it. Mm -hmm. But the problem I have with it, which is kind of frustrating to me, mm -hmm. is like the pro side of things. Yeah. Like I see so many pro riders that are so good, like yeah. they're insane, mm -hmm. ridiculous. Yeah. And they don't have that platform anymore because of the way technology's changed. There's no, v, there's no VHS tapes that keep sure. people just like, dude, this is the VHS tape I'm going to watch over and over again. Right. Oh, my God. And the right. magazine came in the mail. Oh my yeah. God. Like, it's just on Instagram, and it's just like, God. you know, over. And, yep. I mean, there's there's snowboarders that are just phenomenal. There's hundreds of snowboarders that are phenomenal, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like they don't have that platform anymore. I'm fortunate that I had that. Same. Like, I could, mm -hmm. I could like, express myself. And have a platform to like, this is what I like to do, you know? Mm -hmm. I guess there, there is a platform now, mm -hmm. but it's just so fast, quick that it doesn't digest into your soul. Mm -hmm. I used to watch 
videos of Craig Kelly, dude, and it was just like burned in my yeah soul. You knew every line, every yeah. every yeah. trick that was uh, on dude, every I song. Yeah, it. absolutely. Like, I, you could play the song and be, oh, that's when you did that, mm -hmm. and that's when you did that, and mm -hmm. you know, it's not like that anymore. So yeah, and it's just the way the world is, and the way you know, there's so much information mm -hmm. that it's just. I don't know if it'll ever be the same, you know. But when and you watch okay. get Sometimes. snowboarding live in person, you see somebody ripping. It's if you went to a ski resort with Terry Hawkinson, it oh, blows I, your mind. Oh, I bet. And you just ride behind him, and you're mm -hmm. just like, "What was that?" And the way he's turning and all that is, mm -hmm. it, it's a lost art. Yeah. Like, hmm. you know. What uh, do you think technology is gonna? <clears throat> How can it help the industry more? How can how can it help the soul of snowboarding if we don't have that substance? You know, uh, I don't want to say substance, but they're doing a good job. I think that the industry is doing it. You know, it's just the way the technology is. You know, like mm -hmm. the magazines are great. They're representing the the cutting edge snowboarding the best they can. Yeah, it's amazing. Like all the videos and stuff. Like mm -hmm. I just feel bad for like guys that are going out busting their butt six months out of the year to film yeah. a video part and then yeah. nobody watches it. Yeah. That bums me out. Yeah. It you know, hurts. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's just like, oh. Because I know what it takes. I, I know yeah. it takes a lot yeah. of effort. Mm -hmm. And those guys are pushing the limits. And then, yeah. you know, hopefully people watch it, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, well, well there's but a the sport, sport of snowboarding is, is awesome. It's, there's yeah. so many avenues of it. Mm -hmm. Do you think, what do you think is going to help the participation of, of snowboarding grow? You know, snowboarding seems to be kind of like this, this you know, exclusive group of, of industry people. You know, it's a tight group. Know, everyone it knows everyone, it, but you how, you know, like everyone says that snowboarding is kind of dying down or, or whatever. What, what can be done as partners within the industry, whether it be shops or manufacturers, pros, or whatever, organizations, nonprofits to help make snowboarding kind of like... Include more people. Uh, ski resorts and you know programs to get people learning. Yeah. Easier. Yep. Product that helps. It's easier to snowboard to learn yeah. on um, things like that. Mm -hmm. But you know I don't know like snowboarding when people do it mm -hmm. after they get past their first three days they sure. love it it's awesome and they mm -hmm. want to do it it's just expensive. Yeah. It took me a lot longer than three days for it to click, man. It <laughs> but sucked. it's expensive. That's the biggest thing. You're you know, right. You know, lift tickets and stuff. If you know how to do it right, and you you know buy seasons pass, and you yeah. know where to stay, and you know how to do mm -hmm. it, like it's not that expensive. But mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to flying across the country to go to some ski resort with your family, it's thousands. It's a lot of money, man. Yep. So, mm. man. All right. So let's let's hammer on some fast questions here. Yeah. And we can we I can bounce some off off you earlier. Um, and one that you already answered is, uh, what's the best piece of advice you ever received? Probably just, yeah, Craig, I told you before, Craig just told me to go in the backcountry and, you know, get out of the park, basically. Yeah. I mean, not in those words, but it was like, yeah, the park's pretty cool, but like, you know, look at this Take it over here, yeah, so. Yep. That's kind of what made me move to Utah and kind of get into that. Sure. Um, let's go, best day of your life. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Snow, snowboarding or? Oh, nope. I've had some pretty good surfing days for sure. But best yeah. day of snowboarding probably would be, I'll just sum it up. It was a week. It was a week of it snowboarding. Was, it was, or yeah, it was like 13 days. It was, okay. um, I went to Valdez for the nice. first time with Johan. Johan and myself. It was TV5. Nice. And it was with Mike Hatchett and Victoria Jalouse. Okay. And it was crazy. The best. It was 13 days of Bluebird, Bottomless sure. Pal. Yep. To the road, every run, like oh. crazy. And that was, yeah. Cool. Uh, For sure. Worst day of your life? I don't know. Um, uh, well, probably when I got in. I, I went off a jump in Utah, and uh, I landed on a rock, like a rock that was underneath the snow. Oof. I was with my catchet, and, um, uh, dude, I, like, blew my ankle out, basically. And... I had to like hike out with one leg and no yeah it was pretty gnarly but that was pretty bad because I was filming and I was like I probably had like ten shots maybe okay I forget what movie that was that's pretty in, in, in that time period well like, it was like yeah, January or okay. February Jan maybe something like that yeah like I had like eight to ten shots and I was doing pretty good I was like yep. stoked and then 
you know, no. got buckled, right? And yeah. I think that was an epic thing to just get out of the backcountry, sure. back to civilization and like yep. safe. And then mm-hmm. I found out my knee, my ankle was like, it wasn't broken, but it was just blown out. Like Ugh. it took like two months to recover pretty much. Yep. And in January, Jan- starting in January. Yeah, and then I had to like, you know, I remember like putting my foot in a snowboard boot and like, I'm going to keep filming, dude. Oof. And I just had to like lace the thing up and just, Oof. you know. Yeah. Huh. I, I know like there's been worse stuff to happen to people, but that was like a bad, because I just remember like, I was like, oh, I'm just doing good. And, you know, and then it just got <laughs> buckled up. Like, dude. Right. So injuries are tough. Injuries are tough. Yeah. But you get it. It makes you a better person, I think, mm-hmm. you know, truthfully. You know, anything hard like that in yeah. life is... Uh, what piece, of, what piece of advice would you give to someone who's kind of like sitting out an injury? It's good for you. It's good for you? Yeah. Favorite book? The Bible. Um, best piece of advice you could give to someone who wants to make snowboarding their life, like paid to snowboard? Like, you mean like, um, find your own path. Do it, you do it, like make snowboarding look good, whether it's on TV, on the Instagram, on the internet, on whatever. Just make it look good and have a good attitude. And mm-hmm. yeah, right. And don't do it like totally all for yourself, like, sure, like I'm the raddest dude ever. <laughs> and, and it feels good when you see a clip, you're like, oh, dude, that felt good yeah. and it looks good, sure. you know, that's okay, but like, mm-hmm. just do it to like stoke people out make snowboarding yeah. look good you know like that's mm-hmm. I'd say that's the only advice I'd give them yeah, I'd say and lastly what are the three things that will help people have a better moral compass in life three sure three is a good number one hey read, three. read the bible yep um, open up your eyes and you know really see what the truth is mm-hmm. and uh, don't think of everything on the internet that's true yeah I mean the internet's a crazy world just get off the internet <laughs> <laughs> yeah stop watching the internet yeah, stop watching stop this. watching YouTube but just it's a it's a delicate thing you know like yeah and like the the phone thing it's just like oh my gosh digital everything you know it's hard turn it's, it off turn it off turn it off Man. Turn it off. Turn it off. Uh, Dave, always, seriously, always a pleasure. It's been, it's been cool uh, to uh, kind of like interact over the last couple yeah, of years. Yeah. You know, we, we talked a lot yeah. about snowboarding, um, but having, yeah. having you here come, come to Minnesota talk about snowboarding, then being able to sit down and have these conversations, um, it, it means a lot. It really cool. does mean a lot cool. to me. And like, I know a lot of people that are watching that know who you are. And like, Man, Dave Downing, that's just like, not only did I think Dave was cool, but now Dave Downing is even, even uh, cooler. So, uh, so, so Thank you. Thank I'm you. This is a snowboarder that's pushing 50. That's yeah. still that's it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here, man. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, leave a comment or a question. And remember to subscribe to the channel. <laughs> Peace.